Thank you for joining us for worship this morning. This service is pre-recorded. It is not a live stream. And at this time, there are no in-person services at the church, but we're getting closer to reopening. And rest assured, you'll be the first to know. We hope everyone is staying safe by social distancing and wearing our masks. We do that as a sign of love and protecting ourselves and our neighbor. And we also hope that everyone is taking advantage of receiving the COVID-19 vaccine when it's offered. If you need help with this, please let Arlene at the church office know and she can connect you with a ministry team at the church who has had very good luck at helping people make appointments to get vaccinated. Bishop Didi will be with us next Sunday, April 11th, and you can either tune in on YouTube as you normally do on Sunday morning, or if you wish to participate with us in the service on Zoom, uh, you can go to trinityzoom.org and that'll put you right into the service itself. And you can stay there for coffee hour and you can hear the bishop's remarks during the time of the forum. I wanna ask you, if you have any questions or any um, anything that you'd like to hear the bishop discussing during that forum time, would you please send them to Arlene at the office as soon as you possibly can so we can send them up to Syracuse to the bishop and she can have a look at them. So if you have any subjects that you might want her to touch on, uh, just send them to Arlene. And on behalf of myself, the wardens and vestry of Trinity, I just want to thank you again for continuing to support the church financially. It makes such a difference during the time when we're not able to meet together in person. The office will be closed on Monday, but it reopens on Tuesday. So give us a call or email us if you have a need or a question. Now you'll notice the service this morning begins a little differently. We begin with a portion of the Easter vigil, which begins in darkness by lighting the Paschal candle and singing the Azultet. And then we renew our baptismal vows and it'll continue with the Eucharist and you can receive uh, either by the pre-consecrated sacrament that was delivered to you from the church, or you can participate in a spiritual communion without bread and wine at all by saying a prayer uh, that we say together. My friends, the building may be closed, but the body of Christ is most certainly alive, well, and functioning. Dear friends in Christ, before the break of day, our Lord Jesus passed over from death to life. As Easter begins with the lighting of the Paschal candle, a symbol of our Lord's resurrection, the church can, invites her members dispersed throughout the world to gather together in vigil and prayer. For this is the Passover of the Lord in which by hearing his word and celebrating his sacraments, we share in his victory over death. Let us pray. O God, through your Son, you have bestowed upon your people the brightness of your light. Grant that in this Paschal feast, we may so burn with heavenly desires that with pure minds, we may attain to the festival of everlasting light. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Hallelujah! Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. be with you and also with you let us pray almighty god who through your only begotten son jesus christ overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving spirit through jesus christ our lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, 
but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced. <clears throat> How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. second reading is from Paul's letter to the Corinthians. 
If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as it all die in Adam, so all will be made alive, made alive in Christ, but each in his own order. Christ, the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, here is the place they lay him, laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter, 
that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. You know, I don't think many people realize that it was a group of faithful women who traveled with Jesus and his disciples and financially provided for them. Luke's gospel even names them. He says there was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, the wife of Herod's steward, Chusa. There was Susanna and many others who provided for them out of their resources. Well, there's little doubt that Mary, the mother of James and Salome, who accompanied Mary Magdalene in this morning's reading would have been part of those many others that Luke was referring to. Mark says that these faithful women traveled to the tomb to anoint the body of Jesus. Since the Sabbath began at sundown on the day Jesus died, there had not been time to prepare his body for burial. So on Easter morning, these faithful women arrived with spices to anoint his body. But when they arrived at the tomb, there was no body to prepare. The tomb was empty. And my friends, Mark's gospel ends here with an empty tomb. Unlike the other gospels, where there's an experience of the resurrected, the transformed Jesus, in Mark's gospel, it ends with an empty tomb. You have an empty tomb and a young man in a white robe. Almost sounds like an angelic messenger, doesn't it? Saying that Jesus wasn't there. He had risen as he had told them he would. The messenger in the white robe reminded the women that Jesus had told them previously that he would go to Galilee and there you will see him. What was the women's reaction? Joyful beyond measure, full of hope like we think of Easter? Well, Mark says, so they went out and fled from the tomb for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. Ah, uh, Don't be too hard on the women. The women, like so many of us, initially respond to new and different experiences with fear. Now, what were they supposed to do? The women at the tomb asked the same question that so many of us have asked ourselves when we ended up at a crossroads in our lives. You know, it's frightening to lose someone you love and to conceive of making a new life without them. It is just so terrifying that it just paralyzes some people. I can tell you many examples of this kind of paralysis because they think of life that will never be the same. And they don't want to create a new life in this world. They get stuck simply wanting their old life back and they can't seem to move on. It's fearful for many people to graduate from school, isn't it? There's a new challenge of making a life that lies before them and they have to make those choices. How about those of us who face physical limitations as we age? <laughs> no, none of us, right? <laughs> Are we living in the right community? Do we move to be closer to our family? We all have crossroads, just like the women at the tomb. The messenger in the white robe reminded the women that Jesus had told them he would go before them to Galilee, so at least they had a direction they could head in. Yet going home wouldn't be the same, would it? They were not the same people as they were three years before. And if when they did meet the resurrected Jesus in Galilee, the Jesus that had been transformed, they would be even more assured that God's kingdom was real and very near them, just as Jesus had taught them for three years. Walking with the resurrected Jesus they would be able to see things the way Jesus saw things. And you can be assured that Galilee was not their final destination. 
It was simply a stepping off point for a whole new ministry for these women and the male disciples, a new experience with Jesus. That's what Easter is, isn't it? It's a new experience with Jesus. Now, Jesus had said repeatedly before he was crucified that the journey with him would be challenging. You remember the words. He would say you would have to even risk going where I have gone. You'll have to risk even going where I have gone. It's not necessarily going to be comfortable. They would face death as Jesus did because they saw opportunities in the world from a perspective of God's kingdom in a new light. And sharing that vision with people around them could be seen as a threat. And as we've seen even the women at the tomb, people don't like to see those kinds of changes and new things. They don't feel particularly comfortable. They fear them. This resurrection life we're talking about is not about simply reliving what we've already done. I mean, we're not talking about Lazarus here. Resurrection is about walking a path, allowing God's spirit to change us. St. Paul talks about the change in him after his conversion. From now on, Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5, from now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. The new creation is everything, says Paul. Now, I want to suggest today that we as a church, as well as individual members of it, have arrived at the empty tomb. In the coming months, we'll be returning home to the church building with all of its family memories and historic customs. Yet when we arrive back at our home as people, will we have a new vision? Has God given us a new perspective through this past year and this pandemic? What new paths will we meet the resurrected Jesus on? What new aspects of the mission will we face that challenges the way things have always been done? Huh. As we return to our Galilee, we should look at more than just resuscitating the church as it once was. <laughs> We're being transformed as we discover Jesus in new ways of sharing and living out the story of faith. And when we begin the slow process of reopening in the coming months, I promise you, my friends, it will not look the same as when we closed. We'll still have social distancings we keep. There'll still be mass worn. We still won't have our choir or congregational singing at services. We still have to record everyone's name as they come into the building in case COVID rears its head among us and there has to be tracking of people. We won't be able even to embrace one another or share a meal together. And that doesn't sound like us, you know? It appears to me that a transformed life of resurrection is something that we can concentrate on. To continue to be creative in building a vital ministry both virtually and in person, both and. We look beyond simply streaming a Sunday service. And perhaps we use digital technology to create experiences that connect people. We create material that can help people grow in their per uh, personal spiritual lives. Will we teach virtual classes so people can participate them? participate in them uh, without having being, being constrained to just one time. And I don't think counseling people on Zoom is going to go away, nor is telemedicine or some of those things. Perhaps some of the aspects of our virtual church may grow to be geared toward younger people. I mean, even today, if you've had younger people in your living room, you'll notice that they often text to one another instead of talking to one another. 
So maybe this gives us an entrance into their world. You see, virtual life today can expand and reach people in other states, in other locales. We have people that have been participating in our service and watching our service who moved away from Binghamton long ago. And I don't think that they're going to necessarily want to disconnect again. Will this be a platform where the gospel can be presented in a whole new way and people can connect with God and one another in a whole new way? So you see, you have both and, you have in-person, you have virtual. Perhaps that's our piece of transformation, of resurrection. A previous senior warden of mine used to always say, if we do what we've always done, we'll get what we always got. <laughs> and I wonder when we look back, let's say next year, when we start looking back at where we've come from through this year, Will we say, oh, it was good enough? Or we take the risk of being a new creation, of stepping out in faith with a new vision and a new mission. Won't it be interesting to see what things look like a year from now? Well, one thing I can tell you about that, Jesus will still be there. And my friends, if the Lord is there in our midst, then we have life with one another. In the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Please join me as we say the renewal of our baptismal vows. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins. Keep us in eternal life by his grace. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now, please join me as we say the prayers of the people. Creator of the universe, you made the world in beauty and restore all things through victory of our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray that wherever your image is still disfigured by poverty, sickness, selfishness, war, and greed, the new creation in Jesus Christ may appear in justice, love, and peace to the glory of your name. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Let us pray for God's holy people throughout the world. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, and for Didi, our bishop, 
Glenn, our priest, and for the leadership of this parish, clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Help us to strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. Only in you can we live in safety. We pray for those who hold authority in the nations of our world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. O Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the ways of wisdom and truth. Let your ways be known upon the earth. Your saving health among all nations. We pray that you would give comfort to all those who are lonely, hungry, unemployed, homeless, depressed, or imprisoned. Help us to seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving our neighbors as ourselves. We pray you would heal the sick and the suffering, especially those who suffer from the COVID-19 virus and for those who treat them. We also pray for Sarah, Jeff and Robin, Austin, Sally, Tina, Tom, Susan, Kristen, Johanna, John, Helen, Joe, Craig, Mary, Marcia, Danielle, Brenda, Linda, Ida, Anusha, Rudy, Bill, John, Sharon, Nancy, Suzanne, Larry, Betsy, Robert, Andrew and Mary, Virginia, Nancy, Barbara, Marco, Jessica, Suzanne and Emily, Wes, Michelle, Sean and Patricia. Are there others? Let not the needy, O oh Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. We thank you for our families and faith communities even though we can't physically be together for this day of resurrection. We also thank you for those who are celebrating birthdays this week, especially Beverly Hostin Dorsey and Regina. Are there others? Create in us clean hearts, so God. Sustain us with your bountiful spirit. We remember those this day who rest in Christ especially those who have died from the COVID-19 virus and their families who grieve their death. We also pray for David Crocker and Joan Jones, who recently died, and Jackie Covert from the Altar Flower Memorial List. Are there others? Help us to comfort and to be present to those who mourn and be witnesses to the hope that you have given us as we proclaim to the world, Alleluia, Christ the Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we even ask, help us to ask only what accords with your will and those good things which we dare not or for our blindness cannot ask, grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God. One.
the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly, we're bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and became subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Sanctify us, O Lord, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, please join me. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
These are the gifts of God for the people of God. We receive communion together either spiritually in prayer or with bread and wine. And if you have bread and wine with you, we receive the bread as we say the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. And we will now receive the wine as we say together, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. For those who did not receive bread and wine and would like to receive a spiritual communion, I would ask that you would pray with me at this time. Almighty and most merciful God, your presence is beyond what we can see and touch. We pray that you would give us your grace to faithfully receive the spiritual blessing of the presence of your son, Jesus Christ. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. And live in us as you grant us grace to live in you. Amen. And now let us say together the prayer of thanksgiving. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and sickleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.